quick demo of this video tutorial. In this video, we are going to implement CRUD operations insert, update, and delete inside a Node.js application with the help of Express and MongoDB. So here we have the final output from this tutorial. In order to insert a new record, you can click on this button here, then populate the form. Now let's submit the form. So here we have the updated employee list. In order to edit this record, you can click on this pencil icon here, then make the required changes and submit the form. So here we have updated the corresponding employee record. In order to delete the record, you can click on this trash icon here, then it will ask for confirmation. Are you sure to delete this record or not? Click on OK. So here we have deleted the corresponding employee record. Inside this project, we will be using template engine handlebars. We will design these views using express handlebars. Apart from this, we will discuss how to implement form validation inside the project. So there are a lot of things to learn from this tutorial. Please watch till the end of this video tutorial. Before starting this video, I would like to ask you a favor. If you found this video helpful, please thumbs up this video. If you are new here, please be subscribed to this channel and click on the bell icon to get notification about my new videos. Most of the video lesson here also has a written blog post. You can find the link in video description. You can grab code from the as well. What's up YouTube? Welcome to Code Affection. In this video, we will implement CRUD operations, insert, update and delete inside a Node.js application with the help of Express and MongoDB. Without further ado, let's get started. Here is my Visual Studio Code Editor. I will be using this IDE for this project. I am going to create the project inside this project folder here. So let me copy this folder path from here, then back to the IDE. Then click on open folder, then I will paste the directory here, then select the folder. In order to create a Node.js application, we have to run npm init command from the terminal. I will be using this terminal from this IDE or you can use the command prompt also. Now let's run the command npm init hit enter. Then it will ask few configuration details about the project. If you don't want to change those options, just hit enter through them. For entry point, I will be using a JavaScript file with the name server.js. So here we have done with the configuration, finally we just need to type yes, then hit enter. And as a result of this npm init command execution, we have created this package.json file here. Now let's install required packages for this project. First of all we have the express framework itself, then we have mongoose which is an ORM or object relational mapping package which helps to work with MongooseDB from Node.js applications. Then we have express handlebars. Inside this Node.js application we don't have a separate client-side app like React or Angular. So we will be using a template engine for this project. It will be handlebars. Here we have the parent package handlebars. Since we are working with Express, it would be better if we use this package Express Handlebars. So we will be using Express Handlebars instead of Handlebars. And finally we have this body parser package which is used for the conversion of post data into request body. Now let's install these four packages. For that we have to run this command npm i4 installation. In order to save these dependencies inside the package.json file, we have to use this flag save or in short you can use double dash yes. First of all we have the express package. Now let me include the latest version number which is here. I will copy this. In order to specify the version number, we have to use this add the rate symbol then paste the version here. Then we have mongoose. I will copy this version here and then we have express handlebars finally we have body parser
Now hit enter. So here we have successfully installed those four packages here. As a result of that, you can see this dependencies object inside this package.json file here. Before continuing with this Node.js project, let's set up a database inside MongoDB. So first of all, we have to start the server. For that, we need to execute these commands here. First of all, we will navigate inside the MongoDB installation file directory with this cd command. Then we have to start this exe mongod.exe with this parameter dbpath. Here we have given the physical directory where we want to save the data. In order to start the server, we have to execute these commands from the command prompt or you can type these commands inside a notepad. Then you can save that as a bat or batch file like this. Then you just need to double click on this file. So it will start the mongodb server from this default port number 27017. So this BAT file is a best practice in order to avoid repetition of typing these two commands in your command prompt. As a management tool for this MongoDB, I will be using this tool MongoDB Compass Community. Here we have the connection wizard. I will connect the MongoDB with these default configurations here. Click on connect. Now let's create a database. Inside this project, we will be dealing with employee details. So I will name this database as employee DB. Along with database name, we have to provide a collection name. I will give employees. Now let's create the database. Now back to VS Code Editor. Now let's look how we can connect this MongoDB from this Node.js application using Mongoose package. For that, first of all, I will create this folder models. Inside that, I will create a JavaScript file db.js. First of all, we have the request statement for Mongoose with this constant Mongoose. In order to connect the MongoDB, we have to call this function mongoose.connect. As a first parameter for this function, we will pass the URL for the database. Here we have the MongoDB protocol and here we have the local host with default port number 27017 and here we have the database name. In latest versions of Mongoose, we have to pass the second option here, use new URL parser as true. And finally, we have this callback function with a single parameter error. First of all, we will check whether we have any error or not. If there is no error, we will log this message MongoDB connection succeeded. If there is any error, we will print that inside the log. In order to run this db.js file, we have to add a request statement for this file inside the root file which is server.js file. So let's create the root file server.js. Inside that, we will add this request statement for db.js file. Now inside this models folder, we have to define the schema or structure of employee document. For that, I will create a new file here, employee.model.js. Of course, first of all, we need the request statement for mongoose with this constant mongoose. After that, we will create an object for employee schema so here is the object employee schema and here we have the constructor of schema mongoose.schema inside this object here we have to specify the structure of employee document for employee document we have four fields full name email mobile and city so first of all we have the full name and it is of the type string and then we have email mobile and city all of them are of the type string now we have to register this employee schema inside mongoose for that we can do this we will call this model function as a first parameter we will specify the name of the schema and here we have the schema object so in order to insert a new record into mongodb we will call a save function from this schema object here by default it will use a collection with name employees because it will use the plural version of model name here with name employees which we have already created here employees 
So a new record will be inserted into this default existing collection employees. Now we just need to add a request statement for this employee model inside this db.js file here. So here we have done with connecting MongoDB and Node.js application. Now it's time to start the express server. So I will add this request statement for express with this constant express. Now we just need to call this express function with this variable app. And in order to start this server, we can call this listen function from this app variable. As a first parameter, we have the port number. As a second parameter, we have the callback function. Inside that, we have this success message express server started at port number 3000. In order to run this application, we just need to execute this command here node. Then we have the root file which is server.js. Instead of running this node.js application with this node command, I will prefer this one node mon because when we change the source code, when we change the source code while developing this application, node mon will automatically restart the application in order to accommodate the new updates. So it is a best practice to use node mon instead of node while developing the application. In order to work with this Nordmon, first of all, we have to install the corresponding package, which is Nordmon. You can install the package with this command here. I have already installed that in my system, so we can run this command here. So here we have the success message from both Express and MongoDB. Now let's navigate inside this port number, localhost 3000. So here we are inside the project. We can see this message cannot get because we don't have any route inside this Node.js application here. So let's create a route inside this application. For that, I will create a new folder here. Inside that, I will create a new file employeeController.js. Inside this file, we will deal with CRUD operations related to the employee. First of all, we have the request statement for express with the constant express and now we need a router router is equal to is equal to express dot router Now we can create a new router here router dot get function can be called Inside that we have this default URL. As a second parameter we have the request handler function with these parameters request and response. From this function for now we will return a response with a string response.json. Inside that I will pass a sample text. Finally, we just need to export this router object from this controller here. For that, we can do this module.exports is equal to router. Now, let's configure routing for this employee controller inside this root file server.js. First of all, I will add the request statement for employee controller here. Now, in order to add a route for this employee controller, we just need to do this. We will call this use middleware function. Here we have the base URI for this employee controller. From this employee controller, we have exported the router. This line here will configure the routing for this Node.js application. Let me save all of these modifications here. Then back to the application. This Nordmon will automatically restart the application with new changes. I will try to navigate the new route employee. So here we have the response sample text which we have returned from this response here. Now from this route we have to return a form in order to insert or update an existing employee. For that we will be using handlebars. We have already installed handlebars inside this project. Now let's look how we can use handlebars in Node.js applications. So let's look how we can configure this Node.js application for express handlebars. First of all, I will add the request statement for the path which is already there inside Node.js application in order to work with path in Node.js applications. Then we have the request statement for express handlebars with this constant. Now let's configure express middleware for handlebars. 
For that, first of all, I will set the view directory for this application by calling this set function. As a first parameter, we have views. As a second parameter, we have to pass the folder directory where we save the views for this application. For that, we will use the join function from path. As a first parameter, we have the reserved variable inside Node.js application, which is underscore underscore dir name, which is the which is the base file directory path for this project. Into that, we have to join this views folder. So we are going to create a new folder with name views. Inside that, we will have the handlebars view files. Now let's configure the express engine for handlebars. For that we can call this engine function as a first parameter we have hbs and here we have called this function from the express handlebars. Inside that we have this object it may contain the configuration details for the handlebars. First of all I will set the extension for handlebars view files it will be hbs. Then I will set the default view for this application. Default layout is equal to main layout. So there will be a file main layout.hbs. Inside that we have the overview of the application like HTML tag, body tag, head tag, so and so. So it will be a wrapper for the child views. We will create the file in a bit. As a last option, we have the directory for layouts. Inside a Node.js application, we may have more than one layout. So here we have the layout directory for this application. So inside the view folder, we will create a new folder layouts. Inside that we can create the layouts for the application. Finally, we will set the view engine as HPS. Now let's create this folder views with this main layout.hps file. So here we have the folder views. Inside that we will have another folder layouts. Inside that we will create this main layout view. Main layout dot hbs. This extension is provided here. Now inside this main layout view we will have the HTML wrapper for the remaining child views. So we will start with doc type as HTML. Then we have the HTML tag. Inside that we have the head tag. Inside that we will have the title. Title will be something like this Node.js Express MongoDB Correct. After that we have the body tag. Now in handlebars in order to display a value of a variable we can use this double curly symbol and just type the variable name here. Since this is the main layout view for the application child view HTML should be rendered inside this body tag here. In handlebars we have a reserved variable body Inside that we have the HTML from the child views. But this won't work as we expected because inside this body variable we will have the HTML string from the child views. In order to render them as HTML we need to use three pair of curly braces. For this application development we will be using bootstrap and for icons we will use phone awesome icons. So let me add those two style sheet here. We have the uh, bootstrap CDN reference and here we have the phone awesome CDN reference. I will use this BG info class from bootstrap in order to apply a background color for this body. Inside that we are going to use a div with class row from bootstrap. Inside that I will use the grid system from bootstrap. So here we have the div with class call md6 and we need an offset of three column. So we have the class offset md3. Inside this div we will show this body from child views. Now for this div I want to apply background color, margin and padding. 
For that I will be using inline CSS with this style attribute. Because we don't have that much custom CSS rules for this application in order to create a separate style sheet. So here we have done with main layout view. Now let's create a view with form for CRUD operations insert and update that we have to return from this request here. In order to create the view, I will create a new folder here. Employee. Inside that we will have a view with name add or edit dot hps. Inside the view, first of all, I will show a heading with h3 element, and inside that we can show this variable view title. So from this employee controller route, we have to return a value for this property view title. That property value will be displayed inside this h3 element. After that, we have the form element. Inside that, first of all, I will have the div with class form group. This is from bootstrap. First of all, I will show the controls for full name. First of all, we have the label and here we have the text box input with type text. And here we have the bootstrap class form control. And here we have the name for this input control, which is important. When we submit this form, the data inside this input control will be will be returned inside a property with this name full name. And finally, we have the placeholder for full name. Like this, we have to have a form group div for remaining properties like email, city and mobile. So here we have the div for email. Then after that, I want to show both mobile and city in a single line. For that, I will use this div with class form row. All of these classes are from bootstrap. First of all, we have the mobile. Only difference is that here we have used bootstrap grid class called MD6. So this line will be split into half. Inside the first half, we will show the mobile controls and here we have the city controls. Okay. In order to submit the form, we need a submit button. For that, here we have the div with form group. Inside that, we have the submit button with class btn and btn info from bootstrap. And here we have the button text submit. Inside this button, I want to show a phone awesome icon. So I will add this i tag here with class for and for database. Now let me save this view here. So here we have designed a form in Node.js with handlebars view engine. Now let's check how to return this view as a response for this request here. For that, we just need to do this response dot render function can be called. As a first parameter, we have to pass path of the view which is inside the employee folder. Inside that we have add or edit. As a second parameter, we have to pass an object containing properties which is to be rendered inside the view. So right now we have a property view title that is to be passed from this object here. View title is equal to insert employee. Now let me save all of these modifications here. Then navigate inside this URL localhost 3000 forward slash employee. Boom. So here we have the form for CRUD operations inside the Node.js application. Now let's submit this form so that we can insert a new record inside this MongoDB collection employees. Before that, I want to prevent this default behavior of an HTML form which is the autocomplete or predictions from previous posted form data. I want to disable this feature for that we can set this attribute inside the form control here autocomplete I will set it as off. Now let's look how we can post form data in Node.js applications with express. For that we will be using this action attribute here inside that we have to provide the URI to handle this post data. 
so it will be here employee and I will set this method as post now we have to create a post route for this URL for that back to the employee controller then I'm going to create a new router here router dot post and with the URI employee which is already there inside this base URL employee so we can just provide the forward slash here as a second parameter we need the function to handle the request so I will copy this function from here then paste instead of this I will have the console message console dot log then I will print the text hi now let me save all of these modifications then reload the page then submit the form now if you check the application console here you can see the hi message now what happens with the posted data from this form in order to show you that let me remove this action from here save then back to the application reload the page now if you submit this form we can see the form posted data inside the URI instead of passing this form data in URL parameters I want to have that inside this request body here for that we will be using the package body parser that we can do inside this server.js file here now first of all we have to include the request statement for the body parser package so here it is and we want to include these form data inside the request parameter here for that we can do this we will use the use function from middleware and we have called this url encoded function inside that we have this configuration extended as true now we want to convert that into a json for that we will call the use function again with this format json now form data returned from this form here will be the inside the request object body attribute that I can show you here instead of this sample text here I will print request body here now let me save all of these modifications then back to the application then just reload this page let me enter some random text here now click on submit then back to the application so here we have the request body object containing details of the form here now let's look how we can insert the employee record in mongodb for that we will be creating a separate function here function insert record for the function we have two parameters request and response now we just need to call this function here insert record and into this function we will be passing these parameters here now in order to insert a new record in mongodb first of all we have to create an object of this employee schema inside this employee controller so first of all we have the request statement for mongoose and here we have the variable employee in order to store the employee schema from mongoose first of all we will create the object of employee schema inside that we have to populate the form control values from request body object so here it is first of all we have the full name then we have email mobile and city now in order to save this record we just need to call this function save from this schema object inside that we will have a callback function with these parameters error and doc if there is no error while inserting the record we will be redirected to new route employee forward slash list inside this route we will be listing all of the inserted employee record in a table if there is any error we will print that error object in console window now before testing the working of this post request here let me create a route for this list uri with a sample text response so it will be a get request so let me copy this from here 
then here we have the uh, function for request handling and the URI will be forward slash employee forward slash list inside this function we will return a json object response dot json function can be called inside that we will pass this string from list now let me save all of these modifications here then back to the application reload the page let me fill this form with an employee details now let's submit the form i hope we have successfully inserted the record because we already redirected to list url and here we have the sample text from list now let's check inside the mongodb you just need to click on this refresh button here so here we have the new employee record for bruno nash when we insert a new record into mongodb it will automatically create this property underscore id you can treat this field as a primary key for the records inside the collection before implementing rest of the crud operations i want to implement form validation inside this node.js and express application with the help of mongo's schema as a first step towards the form validation first of all we have to update this mongo's model here employee i want to make this full name as required field and i want to check the correctness of email address format inside this property in order to make this full name as a required or mandatory field we just need to add this required attribute inside this object here here we have the required object and here we have the error message for the validation towards this full name if there is no value for full name we have to show this validation error message this field is required in order to check the correctness of email format inside this email field we have to apply custom validation inside the model so here we have the procedure first of all we have to call this function path we are going to apply custom validation for email field and we have to call this validate function inside that we have this function with a single parameter val that means value inside this field will be the inside this parameter and here we have the regular expression in order to verify the correctness of email format and in order to check the correctness we just need to call the test function from this regular expression object if there is an invalid email address we have to show this validation error message invalid email so that is what we do for validation inside the mongoose model now we have to handle validation error message inside the employee controller here if there is any error related to validation this else block will be called details of validation error will be the inside this error object in order to identify whether the error is due to the validation or not we can check the error object name attribute so this is what we do err dot name attribute if it is equal to parameters for this function error object and body inside this error object we will have another property inside that we will have the validation errors for this field so i'm going to iterate through the keys of the object so i will use this for iteration here field in errors object inside this field we will have the name of field where we have a validation error inside this for loop we will have a switch here this path means these fields here full name email mobile and city and here we have the first case if the validation is due to full name field we will save the validation error message inside the body for full name we will use this property full name error inside that we have to save the corresponding validation error message that we can retrieve from this message property it will be exactly similar to this one here okay now we have the email for email we will be using this email error object and here we have the final default case so inside this function we have saved 
properties validation error message into the body object here now inside this else block here we just need to return the updated view here for that we can just call this same uh, view here let me copy this and pasting here along with this view title we have one more object which is employee inside that we will return the updated request body now we have to update this view add or edit hbs file here we have displayed these input controls without binding a property using handlebars as we have shown before when we submit this form this form controls value will be saved inside the request body so from this else block here we are returning that request body with updated validation error messages along with display validation error messages we have to show the values inside this input controls before posting this form for ct we can do this here we have binded value property from this object here ct from employee object we have returned the body as employee here like this we can bind values for remaining input controls also for mobile we can do this and email and full name text box also now we have to show the validation error message for full name and email for that i will be adding this div with this bootstrap class text danger so that it will show the error message in a red color inside that we have binded this property full name error that we have populated inside this function here so when we have any error related to the full name it will be shown inside this div with red text now let me copy this and pasting here for email instead of this property we have email error now let me save all of these modifications here then reload this page now if i try to submit this form here here we have the validation error message both full name and email is invalid now let me try to submit this form with a random full name let's submit the form full name is valid but email is not valid now if i try to fill this email with an invalid email you will have the same invalid error message okay if there is any error due to validation those record will not be saved inside this employees collection so here we have done with form validation in node.js with express and mongoose now it's time to show the inserter records back to an html bootstrap table so let's look how we can get or retrieve inserter records in node.js application with mongodb so here we have already written a route in order to return the list of employees which is here list in order to retrieve records from mongodb we can call the find function from schema so here we have the employee schema we can call this find function from that inside that we have the callback function with these two parameters error and docs inside this docs we will have the all records from this collection employees currently we have only one single record inside this first of all we will check whether we have any error or not if there is no error we will return a view so we will call this render function from response and here we have the view we have not yet created this list.hbs we have to create that inside this employee folder here as a second parameter we have to return this docs for that here we have the object as a second parameter we will return this docs inside this list property here if there is any error we will have the console message with the error object now let me remove this previous response json now we have to create this view list.hbs inside this folder here so here we have the file list.hbs inside the file we have this html table with few classes from bootstrap first of all we have the t head with a single row inside that we have to show the column headers so first of all we have the full name and rest of the employee details like email mobile and city 
inside the t-body we have to show records from this collection employees here that we have returned inside this object here list so let's look how we can render this object inside this list view here so we will be using this index here hash each we have the two curly braces and we have the pound symbol with each and here we have the property list inside that we have populated the records and here we have the each close with this forward slash inside this we have the tr element and here we have the td element for each of the columns full name and rest of the columns email mobile and city along with these employee details i want to have an extra column for actions like edit and delete so here we have the empty header and inside this each loop i will add this td element with an anchor element for each operations so here we have the first anchor element for edit operation inside that we have this phone over some icon and here we have the second icon for delete operation now let me save all of these modifications here now let's navigate inside this route here forward slash employee forward slash list so here we have rendered the html table in order to list records from this employees collection now i want to add h3 element for this table here so here we have the h3 element with text employee list along with this header i want to have a button so that we can navigate into this form here so we just need to add this anchor element here inside that we have this phone over some icon with text create new and here we have the href for this anchor tag inside that we have the url which returns a form for creation of new employee let me save this then reload this page if you click on this button here here we have the form for creating new employee along with this submit button i want to have a button so that we can see the employee list so open corresponding view add or edit let's add an anchor element for list so here it is we have the phone over some icon here with text view all and here we have the corresponding hr of in order to show the table employee forward slash list let me save this then reload this if you click on this we have the employee list now let's implement rest of the credit operations which are edit and delete in order to update an existing employee we just need to click on this pencil icon here then it will show this form populated with corresponding employee details then after making required changes we can uh, update the employee record by submitting this form so let's look how we can show the corresponding employee record when we click on this icon here so back to the IDE here first of all I will add a route in order to retrieve a specific employee with given ID by ID I mean this ID which is created by the MongoDB so let's add the route here it will be similar to this get route here so let me copy this and pasting here for this route we will have a route parameter ID through this we can receive the mongodb record id in order to retrieve a specific record from mongodb collection we can call this mongoose function find by id as a first parameter we have the id underscore id as a second parameter we have the callback function with these two parameters error and dog if there is no error we have to return this add or edit with corresponding employee object for that we can call this render function inside that we have given the view name and here we have the object with title update employee then we have the corresponding employee document so inside this document along with these properties here we have this underscore id so along with these input controls here i want to have a hidden field in order to store the underscore id then only we can update the corresponding employee after submitting this form for update operation so i will add this input hidden field here inside that we have stored the value from corresponding property underscore id let me save this file here then we have to 
update this hrf for this icon here so open list.hbs and i will add this hrf attribute with corresponding url so here we have the employee forward slash here we have the underscore id for the corresponding employee let me save this then back to the application reload this page now if you click on this pencil icon here we have shown the corresponding view we have returned a form populated with corresponding employee details if you inspect this view here you should see the corresponding input hidden field inside that we have the value which is same as that of this underscore id here now in order to update this employee record we can make the required changes here then we just need to submit the form we have already written a route in order to handle this form submission so here is the route okay inside that we have to handle both insert and update operation in order to identify whether we have an insert or update operation we just need to check the value of hidden field which is underscore id so we have to have this if close here then inside this else block here we can call the update function update record with the same parameter list let me copy this and pasting here now we just need to define this function update record so here we have the update record function with these two parameters request and response in order to update a mongodb record using mongoose we just need to call this function find one and update inside that first of all we have the filter condition in order to find the corresponding record for that we can use this condition underscore id is equal to corresponding employee id underscore id as a second parameter we have to have the object with updated employee details and here we have the option i will tell you what we meant by this option new is equal to true as a last parameter we have the callback function with these two parameters error and doc with this option new is equal to true inside this doc variable we will have the updated details of the employee if it is equal to false we will have the old value of the record first of all we will check whether we have any error or not if there is no error we will return the list of employees with updated employee record details if there is any error first of all we will check whether we have any validation error or not then we will call this function handle validation error function which we have already written and we have to return the view with corresponding validation error messages if the error is not related to validation then we will show the general error object in console window let me save all of these modifications here back to the application then reload this page let me update this full name submit the form so here we have updated corresponding employee record so this is how we can update an existing employee now let's look how we can do the final crud operation which is delete so let's add one more route for delete operation here so here we have the get route for delete here we have the url for the request delete then forward slash then forward slash call and id which is the parameter inside this route and here we have the function for handling this request with parameters request and response in order to delete a document from employees collection we just need to call this function find by id and remove from mongoose library and here we have the underscore id of the document and here we have the callback function with error and doc parameters if there is no error during the operation we will return this updated list of employees if there is any error we will show the error object in console window now let's update the hrf attribute for this icon here so open list.hps so we can add the hrf attribute here employee forward slash delete and here we have the parameter underscore id since we have a delete operation it should be better if we can confirm the operation so i will add this on click event here with confirm function inside that we will confirm the operation with this question are you sure to delete this record or not if the user confirm the operation then only we will navigate this route here 
okay let me save all of these modifications here back to the application reload this page now let's click on this trash icon here here we have the confirm dialog are you sure to delete this record click on ok so here we have successfully deleted the corresponding employee record so that's it guys in this video we have created a node.js express mongodb application with crud operations insert update and delete you can download this project source code from the link given below in video description if you found this video helpful please thumbs up this video and for more awesome videos like this please be subscribed to this channel code affection please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit from this have a nice day bye